Hello, beautiful people from under the bridge. Yep, I'm going to talk to you about a thriller from Manila. It's a spiller. It's my new catchphrase. Uh, it's oil. Spilling she is. Um, we make no secret of the fact that we've been short oil uh, for a while. Uh, we've been buyer short. We've been in and out uh, trading shorts. We are currently short trading short. So we are talking to our book. Always bear that in mind. We have a bias. Um, our bias is based on our own technical assessment. It can also involve fundamental assessments, but in terms of timing, when to get short, how far things may go, it's a technically driven world for me. The charts tell you the truth, the footsteps in the sand, it is the money, the movement of the money. Um, so here I am, there's a bit of background noise as a young girls hockey team. I used to call uh, women Doris. Uh, I wonder if when you have many of them, they become Dorai. Anyway, they're all young and prepubescent, so I'm expecting Jeffrey Epstein to show up any minute now, so I need to get on with the video. Oil. Uh, what happened uh, at back end of last week that folks need to know about? Well, uh, Russia. Yes, Russia. Remember that villain who elects presidents, uh, supposedly anyway, um, in the US, that is, I'm talking about, not just in their own country. Uh, Russia no longer agreed to play ball um, with the butcher of uh, the butcher of Istanbul, the, the ambassadorial butcher, MBS, um, who has a special way of treating his enemies, dismembers them with bone sores. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, don't get me started on that medieval barbaric crowd that are um, sympathetic with uh, the Israel Zionist cause. They are just Zionism of a different form, uh, probably a fork of the gene uh, pool as well. But anyway, he's stopped playing the game. And why is that? Well, even uh, the article of Zero Hedge identifies what I've known all along, that the key aspect about it is in actual fact, it in actual fact is fracking in America. In other words, mm, Russia not agreeing to cut back its oil production is as a result of US fracking. And I've described and I've done a YouTube on this before, uh, but why? Is it just because they're anti-America uh, or something? No, no, it's not as uh, simple as that. I've described and I've explained this before, but this is such a key element that I think most people miss. Fracking was a non and probably still to this moment, although they've improved their technology, if you uh, accept um, Mark Katsousis' comments, um, was a non-economic activity. That means uh, you create 10 liters of oil for the cost of X million, um, and you can sell it for only half X million. So that's a non-economic activity. It's kind of like me standing here under the bridge and selling $20 no uh, notes for $5, $10. Uh, I go bust soon, people flood me out, um, and I run out of $20 bills. Um, and it's a, it's, it's, it's a race to zero, basically. It's a non-profit. It's a distinctly non-profit, high-cost business. So what's happened in oil? Um, in, and the fracking industry is that it's tipped America from being in, uh, dependent on Saudi oil to being oil independent. This was a key moment because it took 2 million barrels of oil a day off the market in terms of the export market for the main OPEC nations and producers. So suddenly you went from uh, a balanced market to a glut. Now many of those nations, as you know, are medieval uh, barbaric constructs and rely entirely on their revenue and oil. Um, I love, by the way, short sidebar here. Um, of course Bernie Sanders and socialism can work. This is millennial whatever, whatever. Um, you don't know. Look at Norway, uh, quietly forgetting that Norway has exceedingly low population and sits on a mega oil field. Of course you can. If, uh, if being Norway 
is a justification for socialism could work, then uh, Saudi Arabia is a justification for medieval beheading barbarism and sexist society uh, with backward tendencies should work. Um, so people forget that, by the way. And when you hear that answer, just bury it, please. Um, you know, they, they love using the Scandies as comparisons. Anyway, back to the fracking discussion that's at hand here. So fracking is QE. It's financial QE because the banks are automatically issuing instant junk bonds. They're giving instant uh, money to sub-economic businesses that uh, in terms of debt, uh, and most of them, by the way, when they first started, they got, they in, they, they got investors and there were shareholders. Those shareholders largely lost 95, 99%. Those businesses should have gone bankrupt because they shouldn't have been started in the first place. And what's happened is, for some re remarkable reason, there's a very friendly banking community. There's a very, very nice flow of bank money that still supports these industries. Now, when that's happening, that tells you it's a political event. It's not an economic capitalistic event. Everyone says we have capitalism and capitalism doesn't work. We do not have capitalism. We have an oligopoly, oligopoly of mega corporates and a dark state manipulating mixed economy with deeply, deeply uh, government run dark op scams which control the printing machine and decide which industries survive, whether they are economic or not. Um, and that is not capitalism. But anyway, uh, so what is actually happening is those banks will be propped up. In other words, the underwriter of those banks are not that stupid about sub-economic activities. They know they're sub-economic. So hold on, why is a bank that should be only making safe loans in a capitalistic environment supporting an industry that is unsustainable at the surface level on the numbers because they told to and they told they will be made whole and it's part of everything that's going down and there's such a, sh a shit ton of debt and rubbish and toxicity in this economy that everything's going to go down it's like the final sin you know it's like allowing uh, as on the titanic um one of the guests to take a crap on the deck the point is it's not good behavior it's not what you typically do in high society on a, a five-star vessel. But as we've already hit the iceberg, the hull is already at this angle and the whole lot is going down to the bottom of the ocean. It's absolutely academic that um, this minuscule, however disgusting, sin is allowed to take place because in the grand scheme of things, the ship is going down and you're in the 12th hour. Um, and so it truly doesn't matter. And when we talk about debt and the global reset where we are, this is, there is a whole new realm coming and the insiders know it. So um, backing one last Ponzi scheme and just pushing everything over the edge, um, it's going to go over the edge anyway. You know, the car is crashed. You know, it's kind of like um, injecting uh, the leper who also has a late stage three lung cancer uh, with coronavirus, um, it probably doesn't matter. It's not the kindest thing to do. It's not the smartest thing to do. But, you know, it probably doesn't matter. He's dying. He's on borrowed time. Um, so, actually, they've been instructed to do this. And the, the reason they've been instructed to do this is because the socio-political agenda that they are pursuing is better served by crashing the oil price and squeezing the other oil nations and preventing them from getting higher revenue than the money they are wasting supporting up a pet project that they shouldn't be supporting that is cash flow uh, negative and has no chance of paying off its debts. <clears throat> so actually what you have, what you should have and what you should know is we have many forms of QE and it's been ongoing. So you had the repo QE because the banks had no liquidity. Well fancy that when you have banks that are backing cash flow negative projects that you keep after lending money to people that are burning money. You know, there's, there's this big bonfire in and, and you say, more notes, please. The fire's getting, going, getting out. Load more notes, please. So you then have to do repo QE as we started in September, October, which by the way, sidebar on the equity market is when we had that absolute melt up and went parabolic. 
which led to the Economist's cover that said, by the way, Microsoft, Google, uh, Alphabet, Apple have all uh, collectively in the last six months added two trillion. That was the, eco the Economist's cover, that these sort of titanium bulls that were unstoppable. And I just said, wow, that's absolutely, that's absolutely the melt up that sees the end. Uh, we're coming close to the end and there would be a final melt up. And that was happening. And that was on repo money that the Fed is printing to give to banks of which some is finding to chase the, 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 the mega oligarchs because they know they will survive and they are part of the solution and the control structure over you. The surveillance state, they are part of the grid of the surveillance states. I'm recording this on my prisoner tag. Uh, we have many of them. People like to decorate them. Um, you know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, decorating your own coffin um, and a gravestone. But anyway, um, so uh, the surveillance state will survive. They've mooned two trillion in equity on this repo. These banks are needing this repo. They're supporting non-economic industry, which is QE by another name that the dark state permanent government wants because it's putting the, the anchors on uh, the oil industry. It dovetails in with the Greta Thunberg green theme, which is how green is good. It's perfect method for bankrupting and closing quickly the supply level so that you can re-establish a new equilibrium for oil when oil will be providing uh, to a lower level and will become uh, more of a smaller moderate sized industry apart uh, in comparison to the mega industry it has been. It will clear out all the offshore providers, all the marginal oil companies in time, those that they've decided aren't getting the benefit of uh, banker uh, support uh, until such time as all the debt. So they can bring on this debt uh, jubilee, this write downs, they can get their main themes pushed, which is green energy. So Russia is sitting there and seeing sub economic shale and is being told by the OPEC nations, you need to cut, we need to cut 500,000 uh, barrels of oil a day. And they're saying they're killing this industry. We're sitting on tons of the oil and they're saying, don't release your oil. We've got to do our bit for supporting the price. While the American banking cartel is causing a glut by creating this uh, additional supply brought on that is not even economically viable. So Russia is saying, you're going to kill the market for what I'm sitting on millions of. I'm going to get what money I can while I still can because I can see we're all going to lithium battery existence where we will be uh, batteries everywhere, uh, probably implanted in our backside with a microchip. Um, and as a result, you know, I've got to get what cash I can for this. Screw your cuts telling me to hold back while Joe Soap on the other side of the Atlantic is pumping every single last drop and trying to get every single last dollar for it and causing an absolute glut and causing an absolute spill in the price but going to squeeze every drop they can and get what dollar they can in until they are done and backing it subsidizing it don't forget this is the exact same thing that america wants sanctions on the eu and is attacking barnier for and i don't like barnier he thinks he's tough and throwing his weight around on the uk on the Airbus scenario in that there's government subsidies for Airbus, while America is subsidizing via their banking system uh, an, an, a huge uh, industry that should not be sustained to cause an absolute um, get every last cent for any drop of oil that is out there uh, and to put the squeezes on everyone else so that they can bring to bear their green um, industry. Uh, so forget it guys. We've said it before, they're going to kill this oil. I've, I was said it last year in 19, you could see below $10 single digit oil. This was a long time ago. Why? Because this isn't a capitalistic market. It's got nothing to do with the cost of extracting. Let me say that again. The oil price is not balanced and got anything to do with the cost of extraction. 
The oil price has not got anything to do with the cost of extraction. You've heard it three times now. Because it's been too politicized, it's too economically significant, and the people who are leading us by the nose have decided what they want to do with it. And they want to do, a, after whiplashing it up to 150 pre-subprime, and rebounding it to 130 post subprime and thrashing it back down. They have in increased the volatility of price in this that it's become almost unsustainable um, in terms of uh, its viability. You go get a monthly or even an annual chart of the oil price and you will see bouncing between 12 and $25 for decades until the Greenspan era and we started breaking out from 82, 87. Then you ran to 150 at the top of subprime when they made everybody rich. The mass affluent effect, low interest rates and productivity miracle. Inflation was killed, everything made in China. How did they tax all your extra wealth? With their Rockefeller tax at 150. Then they broke the market um, uh, in dot com. They broke the market in subprime. Uh, then they reinflated uh, after subprime. They broke it again after China fell apart and was buying up all the oil and building cities into kingdom come and bringing a century and a half's worth of future growth of development forward and doing it all in a decade, um, thereby scorched earth policy for any future building development um, and mothballing a whole bunch of homes that are yet to be expanded into. Um, anyway, so all of that happened and this oil price has been thrashed around and now it's going for the dive. And the possibility of single digit oil or very close there to or certainly substantially lower than most people have seen in multi decades is out there and is coming and what does that mean well it means it means that uh, the, the uh, fracking is sub-economic and is there to create a glut and by so doing it's suppressing the money made by iran it's suppressing the money made by others which is why saudi being a friend of America and Israel was whispered in the ear uh, about this forthcoming and rushed this Aramco, Aramco listing where they handed over a large part of the company to their citizens. How generous after not thinking of their citizens for centuries. How generous indeed. Patsy, Patsy handoff time. Uh, and are entering into this Neom project and all of these cities, a free trade zone and China's um, uh, Marco Polo, Silk Road uh, policy, etc. Getting all involved in that uh, and investing frantically into other industries. This is what's been going down. Uh, and I, I don't know how well they've executed on that. I think they're lazy, fat and rich. Uh, and they're clearly barbarians, this MBS guy. Um, but hey, uh, this is why they're taking your oil. And the US has disbalanced the, the supply and Russia said stuff it if we're killing this industry and we're all going to be running on batteries and it's on borrowed time I'm going to get whatever money I can get for what I've got because Russia remember is nothing if it isn't an energy company uranium um, and they had tons of yellow tail uh, which is uh, kind of uh, yellow cake which is part of what's nuclear uh, from their old nuclear Soviet era. They were selling tails even to the Americans. They had uh, a deal and arrangement for that. They have oil and gas. This is it. This is largely all the oligarchs, funny enough, all uh, Zionist uh, Jew. Uh, there was only, only the official that was handing out. Do you know when they were, uh, there was in the room, you must read Mark Katsousis' book on oil. When all the negotiations were going for all these um, major corps, that had been uh, handed out uh, where the citizens supposedly got access to the share. That was all part of our drunken friend, trying to remember his name again, um, Yeltsin. Um, there was only, the, the only Christian was the, Russian, um, was the Russian official. And then you had Abramovich, you had uh, Kodorsky, you had all of these characters, Berezovsky, all of them in the room. No one else was invited. Isn't it interesting? And they ended up negotiating for parts of the state silver of Russia, um, which is why Putin um, put the squeezes on and ensured that they uh, respected his power and put Kodorsky in jail on a tax. They'll always chase on a tax when they need to squeeze somebody really rich as balls. Um, and Kodorsky went into jail and was subsequently later released. Um, but anyway, so 
all that story aside, that was a Zionist ploy and that handed over the oil and the steel and many of the big and the gas assets over to these oligarchs, much like the oligopoly we have of corporations here with Apple, Microsoft and all of those. And if you look at the ownership and you look at the behavior of um, Bill Gates, you look at the Google owners, Bryn, uh, etc., and you look at the projects they're supporting, you will see it. Anyway, so oil, oil, oil. Oil is a bear. We gave to this community um, planes, all American uh, pipelines um, as a trade. We shorted it at $25. It's now trading into the 12s. That's a 50% cut. We've got short positions on numerous platforms and options, uh, put options that have more than doubled. Um, we've got, uh, we've, we've given you the uh, other uh, Tullow oil. My God, I'm still short Tullow and it's also going <laughs> to uh, single digits. I've got it going sub, um, sub double digits. It's at 27 now. It will have more to fall in my opinion. We, we've given CCL, which was Carnival, which is a liner company. Before there was any coronavirus, before there was even trade wars, shorts with an overperformance to the short side to help get you guys some trades. Look, not everything we've t said will happen, will happen. I think I said Wells Fargo and it initially went up, um, although it's wetting the bed now. Um, but most of what we've provided were shorts on a forthcoming basis and saying not too far off, not too far off. Look how the fundamentals have come to meet it. Did we predict corona and trade wars? No, we didn't. A year and a half ago, we didn't know any of that. But the technical charts were saying, be a bear, the oil services sector, premier oil, all of them, look at them. Be a bear, these guys, they are going to be killed. So what's happened is the perfect storm for oil. Russia wants to get all the money it can as quick as it can because it sees the end of uh, the game for this commodity. When I say end, uh, we won't be able to switch everyone off petrol that's driving a car in a night. That's going to be decades and decades of work. But when they do a cash for clunkers scheme, you can bet your ass it won't be for you put you in a diesel car or a petrol car. It'll be everyone into a Tesla battery car. Oh, Tesla did I mention? That little old company that got mooned from $180 to $900 and incinerated all the shorts. Um, with not much really reason for that to happen. Um, so you've got to ask your question about that. Uh, the guys, the most fundamentally smart guys like Stanley Druckerman and all of these guys, you know, that, that, that did get short it, just don't understand it and stay away from it because they aren't conspiratorial. They don't recognize the control structures in the game on certain of these companies. Anyway, so that's how, that's how uh, Tesla will start to own its own um, market cap in time. The next, next cash for clunkers, you won't get anything with a, <coughs> with a diesel or a petrol um, engine on it. Uh, anyway, so lots of fascinating things happening right now. Russia wants to get its money out. Um, so OPEC is screwed. OPEC needs its money and it's got a non-cooperative mega producer like uh, Russia. Iran is under stress and financial sanctions. Why is it going to play the game with the Saudis that are trying to attack it uh, trying to undermine Syria, um, you know, the whole Sunni Shia thing uh, that are clearly friends and alliances with Israel while pretending not to be. Um, and Iran is sitting there being squeezed between Israel and the Saudis uh, and is trying to help uh, Syria not get overthrown. Well, you've actually got uh, Russia who's also involved in that little hand. Then you've got Turkey um, who's in the mix. Uh, whose currency is falling. So let's talk the currency element about this. And I need to say a few things to you guys. You're all going to be watching the equities. If it's an oil equity, fine. Be short if you get the setup. You need real method, guys. You'll get shaken out. But the game is actually not the equities. The equities are going to be running around like a chicken without a head. Let me just warn people. The biggest and fastest rallies occur in a crash. Let me just say that one again because you're not listening and you're not grasping it. In major equity crashes, the hardest and fastest pumps actually occur in a crash. You can have 7 and 15% moon periods after it's just spilled 13 or 14%. And they will be brutal, violent and volume backed. So this is going to be a headless chicken thrashing around. You want to jump into general indices short. You, they'll just come out, the ECB or someone else will cut rates and it'll pump, we'll pump money and we're going to stand by the economy and they'll do a big thing. And you know what? 
you psychologically and emotionally trade. You'll be watching it and it's down. And then it's down some more. And then it's down and you say, damn, I should be short. It's down some more. I can't bear not to be in. And that's when you chase in. Bam, I can't take it anymore. Meanwhile, it's hitting all the uh, disorderly descent limits that the control structure has. They say, send a muppet and a, a puppeteer, a teleprompter reader to go say something super positive right now and say we're going to do whatever we need to do. And out comes central banker XYZ with ridiculous statement of cash forever and helicopter money. You jump in short emotionally because you can't. You've just reached the point where you can't bear not to be short anymore in this damn spilling market. And the thing jackknifes up bloody 15% at the force Megatron is all the hedge funds that think they've got the news 1.5 microseconds before you run all your stops and jump in ahead of you and react to the news and the algo XYZ um, with gold plated uh, server wires sitting right next to the Reuters, Bloomberg and all the other news wires are front running you to hell and gone and, and shooting you through stops at such a rate that you get slipped three times and half murder your entire equity account. Equities are not the game. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? The trade is FX emergings and guess what? The ruble, yes, USD ruble is one of them. Russia saying no means A, the oil price will get killed further, but they want to keep making money out of oil. They're not going to be the guy that sits on their hands and sits with a whole bunch of useless oil when peak supply uh, of oil or peak demand for oil at least has well passed and it'll take them 100x years for the couple of old timers, late stage guys in the curve that still run a diesel pump on a farm somewhere for pushing water around to consume their oil. They're going to get all they can for their oil while the party's good. This, let's be clear, someone shouted fire in the cinema and they're all hitting the damn door and they all want to get out. No one wants to get burnt um, and sitting with tons of oil and not getting any money for it or at a much lower level post event when there's very um, a significantly lower demand is not the game. So everybody wants to get whatever they can for their oil. And if Russia ain't playing, believe you me, OPEC disbandons. The others think, shit, I'm not sitting on my oil of everyone else. This is oil season, behind the scenes, everything. So everybody's going to run it. What Russia says Iran will do as well, um, as well, uh, you can certainly expect. So Venezuela syndrome is coming to those heavily oil reliant countries, including the pain to Venezuela itself, uh, and Iran is going to make sure that they keep pumping and getting whatever they can, although they're going to have to do backdoor deals because of the sanctions, and the Europeans will have to pretend they've not bought Iranian oil because otherwise the Americans will start trying to bully them, etc., 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 much in the same way as Airbus and Boeing, while they subsidize their fracking industry to hell and gone. Um, so that's the way of the game. The big bully is America. Um, and Russia says, no, we're going to get our money that we can for it, we want it, and we're going to pump. Uh, and that means they're probably going to pump big. This is a key moment. They're not going to half, you know, you don't get half pregnant. You pump oil. You pump oil and you say, who wants some? We're doing deals. Come and get it. We're the biggest supply in town. We're going to flush it faster than ever. Uh, and you get whatever you can for it while there is it. So this is a disorderly market. This is why I say overreaction emotionally to the downside could see single digits. And this is, as I said, more than uh, 18 months old uh, suggestion that um, we've made. And the fracking is part of it. So don't trade the equity markets. You can go in the Sunday and you can check the USD ruble. Guess what? Terrible oil is not going to be good for the ruble uh, prices, the spilling of the oil. It's also not going to be good for any other, it's not going to be good for the Saudi peg to the US dollar as well for that matter. Um, and I think that one will come unstuck. I don't know who's going to hold that one up uh, for the Saudis. Um, but it's not going to be good for a lot of energy reliant nations. Commodity currencies are going to fail. And we've already had the Aussie because of their housing absolutely failing because China is uh, going to fail. The Aussie is going to keep failing. It's too late to chase in, even though I think it will go significantly lower in some ways. It feels too late because you, you, the, the Aussie has gone from one extreme and it's just falling through the floor. You've got to have a look at the New Zealand and we've actually got structure and setup potentially coming for Canada. So the commodity currencies will follow the emerging currencies, the FX emergings. The games are currencies because when those get disorderly, as I've said to my guys in the community, I've said, once you push the Ford Bronco from, um, from the mountain cliff edge, 
over the side with a handbrake off, you don't, you don't stop it part the way down. That thing keeps careering down all the way, goddamn way, until it hits the bottom of the valley. Uh, and if it's an American Ford with a, like the Ford Pinto, it explodes on impact like Hollywood has taught us. Um, and, and there you go, that's the end. It doesn't stop halfway. So currencies emergings are the game. You get liquidity, you can squeeze them, and then you can roll into the currencies, commodity currencies, which come after the emergings until we get to core. The crisis is uh, much bigger than an equity situation. The equity is for the retail muppets, the man in the street who cares about Apple and um, Facebook and the, sh the everyday stuff they interact with. The currency markets are the big game, the debt markets are the big game. If you want to have something that kind of like an equity, you should be short HYG, we gave you that one, junk, J and K, HYG, these are your debt, yes, your debt. Uh, companies high yield debt, junk, high yield debt. I did a YouTube on Mike Milken. You should be short your high yield debt uh, companies, guys. Um, so that's kind of like a, um, uh, a portfolio, an ETF of high yield debt. Uh, if you want to be uh, short that, that's going to be consistently down. I don't see that whip lashing. There will, there will be a little bit of whiplash, I think, on all things, but I don't think people are going to get excited and say it's great value, I want to own high yield debt right now. So you're going to have, in that high yield debt, you will probably have some lending to energy uh, uh, sector. You'll have quite a high percentage of it. Guess what? We think it's crap. We think it's crap. Sunday morning breakfast run, yeah, all the bikes coming past and all the sports cars, um, you might hear them uh, in the background. So that's the game. That's the game. Don't trade the debt markets to the short side because there is an overhanging, and I've said this so many times and I'm going to repeat it. The rating AGs haven't done their job. There's big name American corps that are just one level above junk. They truly should be junk. They should have been junk long ago. These guys have been borrowing money at ridiculously cheap interest rates to buy back their own stock so that they can make their own option targets. It's been a greed fest. So the agents of business make their money and add debt to the corporation. You just make it worth their while. That's how you get total communism, guys. We're getting the total communism. They have to break every corporation. How do you do it? You rely on the greed of the people that are agents for the company, the CEOs and the CFOs. You make it so cheap for debt that it's uh, better to have debt on the balance sheet than to have equity holders that you have to pay uh, dividends to. Uh, you leverage the company to the moon pushing your share price to, at the same time to the moon so that those guys hit their options targets even though they're doing half the revenue with a two-thirds of the profitability the share price is higher because you've pumped the you've made you've killed the interest rate environment because you've flooded the world uh, with debt it's so cheap to borrow not for you on your credit card where it's 26.9 percent with capital one because you're subprime or MBNA or all of these guys where they uh, are charging, ripping your face off uh, and everyone is facing double digits, but for the insiders, the 